Have you ever wanted to begin again? Now, how do I want to start this? Got my blue glasses on this time. They're kind of funky. <laughs> hey everyone! So I kind of wanted to come on and talk about this idea of starting over and what I like to call beginning again. I, I like the idea of beginning again instead of starting over. I don't know, it just sounds prettier to begin again. And I'm only bringing this up because I know every new year, even though it's like already February, but every new year everyone like plans out their goals and their intentions for the new year. They pick out a word and they do all these like introspective things to sort of plan out their life and how they want it to go for the new year. And I do this too, but for some reason this year, I it took me a lot longer to figure out exactly how I wanted things to go. And I'm still in the process of trying to figure everything out. And I think I put into place certain things that I know for sure that I want to do and get done and in the beginning of January I felt like I had all these ideas and plans and to-do lists and it was just really hard for me to get motivated to actually do them. I don't know if anybody else felt like that but I definitely felt like that at the beginning of the year. It was a very slow go, like a very slow going process of trying to figure out exactly what it was that I wanted to do for sure and not just do it because I wasn't quite unsure or that I should do it but like that I was sure that I wanted to do these things and this is how I wanted my year to go. Anyway I'm still thinking about all these things and one of the things that kind of just came into my mind like a couple of days ago was the idea of just erasing everything and starting over from scratch. And I think this is like a very scary thing to even contemplate. And what I mean by erasing everything and starting over from scratch, everything that I was sort of struggling with were, you know, ways in which to improve my social media accounts, particularly, like specifically YouTube, like my new YouTube channel and maybe my Instagram feed a little bit, but it was mostly the YouTube channel. You know, I kind of take account of the videos that I already have up on my channel, the video ideas that I already like have in my mind or I've listed somewhere that I want to do, and just to see how the channel has grown, like how it's been growing, what my followers really like to watch, and just things that I kind of always wanted to create, but kind of never really went about creating it only because I thought like my subscribers won't like this type of video or no one's gonna watch this it was kind of things like that and I was thinking about it and I'm just like this is my channel I should create things that I want to create not because I think no one's going to watch it or my subscribers won't like it I'm pretty sure a lot of youtubers they kind of adhere to the analytics and like what videos get the most views and stuff like that everything. I know I do it. Like, I think we all kind of do do that and sort of cater to our audience. And sometimes I kind of want to do something different and not necessarily do like the same things over again. I guess that's what it is. I, I want to do something different and I'm kind of hesitant to see how well that will go in terms of the audience that I have. So I was thinking of, this, you know, of like deleting or like getting rid of like the majority of my videos that are already on my channel and just kind of starting fresh with new content and new things that I wanted to put out and just the thought of that kind of freaked me out a little bit because I was just like oh my god I, I know how that feels when somebody that you really like kind of disappears and their content just goes away and it's just like oh it was such good content but yeah, I just had this, you know, this idea of beginning again. Same with my Instagram account. I, you know, especially like the older posts that don't kind of flow very well with the way that I want my feed to feel like now. It's like, ah, uh, but that represented that time in my life. Anyway, I am completely rambling on about this, but it's just something that I've been thinking about. So I did take action on it. I don't know if 
any of you notice and I think that's that's the funny thing about it though is that I probably like I already did something to sort of remedy this whole wanting to be in again thing I'm not sure if anybody noticed it but I kind of wanted to come on and just kind of talk about this idea and tell you exactly what I did so I want to start with Instagram because that's probably the easiest so y'all have an Instagram, y'all know that there's a new-ish feature on it and it's the archive. You can actually go through your feed and archive photos and it goes into like a little hidden feed. And so I went ahead and went all the way back to like the first first Instagram photo that I ever posted on my Instagram account. And I went through my account and archived a lot of photographs, a lot of photos that I didn't feel fit the feed anymore. A lot of those photos and stuff you can always see on my blog because everything is on the blog. Like literally everything that I ever share in any part, like any social media place always ends up on the blog. So that link is always in the description box down below. So if you ever want to see more content that I've already taken off various social media platforms, it is all on the blog. But yeah, so I went ahead and archived like hundreds of photographs and I still have a lot more to kind of decide on that I wasn't really sure about to archive. It was easy to do that on Instagram. I archived a lot of photos. And so I was looking at my YouTube channel the other day and there were a lot of videos. You know, when you go on the tab on the top, and it's the video tab and you click that tab and it populates all the videos on my channel. That video feed for you, it only populates the videos that I have public. On YouTube, you can upload videos that are public, unlisted, and private. Private videos are only for me. Unlisted is anyone can access an unlisted video as long as they have the link to that video. And so if you want to search it in the search bar on YouTube, my videos won't come up if they're unlisted. And in public, you can search it in the search bar, it pops up on my, my video tabs feed and you can watch it. Again, instead of deleting a bunch of older content or content that I feel wasn't up to par, you know, like wasn't that great, I've decided to take them off of my channel. So what I've done is I have either privated videos that don't really pertain to much of anything that everyone else would enjoy. So like old high school things and stuff like that, that I've privated. But other videos that are like mostly my planner videos and some scrapbooking videos, those I've went ahead and unlisted from my channel. So what that means for you is that when you go on the little videos tab and you populate the videos feed, there will be a lot of video content that just won't show up, that used to show up. They would have disappeared from that feed. And I know I might have unlisted some videos that you really liked or because I know a lot of my followers, they kind of go back to certain videos, especially the planner videos and the scrapbooking videos. So what I decided to do was unlist those, the ones that I didn't want, like just a random person who discovers my channel and they're just going through my feed. Those videos that I didn't want them to see, I've unlisted them so that way when they go through my video feed, they'll just see the ones that I kind of want them to see. But for those unlisted videos, that I know a lot of you might enjoy going back to certain videos and you don't see it on my feed, you can always find them in my playlist. So I don't know if a lot of people who just use YouTube check out the people that they follow's playlist, but mine are always organized because I'm a psycho. It's like an OCD thing. But mine are always organized into categories. So I believe I have life, a life playlist. I have a travel playlist. I have a scrapbooks playlist, a journal playlist, and a haul playlist. So, and I think I have other playlists that maybe are series oriented, like my Misadventures Abroad and my Southeast Asia visual scrapbook videos and a bunch of other ones like my kindness journal series. Any video that is in parts will have its own playlist basically. But for the planner and scrapbooking content that I've unlisted, you can find those in my scrapbooking playlist. When you click the scrapbook playlist, it'll autoplay, but then you can click the title of it to see all the videos in like a, a, a list. You can be able to see all the videos in a list and you can scroll through them and they're all there 
all of them are there. Even if it's unlisted, they're there. And again, I did that because I know some of you go back to some of those videos. So I just didn't want to just private them or like get rid of them completely because I know there's some videos out there that, that I've done that I probably don't like anymore or don't want to show up on my feed that you all enjoy. So I did that. I'm pretty sure there are other people who kind of go through this process. When you kind of look at all the stuff that you create, you kind of have like, you're very critical with yourself for one. And you also kind of have like a love-hate relationship. So like one day you're feeling that video and it was awesome. And then maybe like two weeks later, you're just like, oh my God, why did I film that? This is so bad, you know, stuff like that. So I periodically kind of skim my feeds and stuff and just see how I like which videos that I kind of want to be out there and which ones that I probably don't want it to be out there for the entire public, but for people who follow and enjoy my work, unlisting the videos and putting them in these playlists are the best way that I thought I can, you know, keep that for you and then just keep my video feed pretty. So a lot of the videos that I did on list are older videos, so videos from 2015 and 16 for the most part, some 2017. Most of them again are my planner videos. I kind of want to move away from the planner video. I think for me that was like the, a phase was using planners because I don't really go to my planner that often you know like i used to i don't really do things in planners and if i do i kind of use the planner as like a binder now not so much planning so a lot of those videos i've, I've unlisted because i kind of want to move my channel away from that whole planner thing that happened that one time <laughs> and i really want to focus on better scrapbooking videos and my art drawing videos so i think all of my art drawing videos are still up even like the older ones only because art it's more artsy and it's and you know your art kind of evolves and I just kind of like going back to like the first art journal with me videos that I have up and seeing that and seeing what I do now and I'm always inspired by my art journal videos from the past I'm never inspired by my plan with me videos from the past I'm, I'm just really not so I kept almost all of the journal videos and again if I unlisted some journal videos they will be in the journals playlist so I have a scrapbooking playlist and a journaling playlist and the scrapbooking playlist is for scrapbooks and for planners but I like to keep them separate because for me they're they're two separate things the art journals are more journaling my travel journals are more journaling even though I am documenting my story like in a scrapbook they're just more my travel journals tend to be more junk journal style and my art journals are just art journals. I use scrapbooking products in them sometimes, but they're more, they just feel more like in the journaling category than in the scrapbook category. So that is what I've done. And I really wanted to come on and explain that because I felt after a while that I needed to sort of explain what I had done to my channel before I get any questions about, hey, didn't you have a video about this? And it's just not here anymore those sort of things but yeah I just kind of wanted to come on and kind of explain that and just I don't know I, I'm very curious what you all feel about this idea of starting over like starting fresh and beginning again like I always toy with the idea oh I'm going to get like a new URL name and I'm going to create an entire website and I'm just going to start over and my old content doesn't matter but I don't know, it's like an attachment issue with that old content that I have. It's like, I don't want to completely abandon it. And I know there's some people, there's a lot of people that I followed over the years who, you know, they had a blog and what they did was they abandoned that one and started a new one. Some of them moved the content over and a lot of them didn't. A lot of them just kept their older content as an archive on that site and then started fresh. And I don't, I don't know how to do that. And it's just something that I've been struggling with and thinking about these last few days of just that idea of just starting all over again. Like just getting rid of everything and just starting fresh. Like I said, I was thinking of doing that with my Instagram account and the YouTube channel and just starting from scratch. And I don't know, it just seems 
like part of me really, really wants to do that. And then the other part of me feels really bad because, you know, I created all this stuff. It's gotten all this interaction. Instead of, you know, abandoning it, maybe I can make it so that my channel or my feed, you know, turns out the way I sort of envision it in my head, not how it is now, but how I envision it in my head, how I want it to be, but with working with what I already have. It's kind of like when you want to redo a room, but you don't want to spend a lot of money on new furniture. So you're just trying to figure out a way to work with the furniture that you already have to sort of create that vision of the room that you see in your head, but like in real life. And I guess that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to manifest that vision of my YouTube channel that I have in my head, but into in, in like real digital life, but without compromising the content that I already created for it. Does that make sense? I don't know. I could just be going on. But yeah, I would really appreciate your feedback on this. Hopefully whatever I just said makes sense because, you know, I can talk a lot and not make any sense because I do that sometimes. <laughs> or I think I do that sometimes. I'm very curious as to what you think about this idea of starting over or beginning again and what you think about how I've gone about it with my channel and if you follow me on Instagram, my feed. And yeah, and I guess like what you would be interested in seeing more of. I really would love to create more sort of like this face-to-face -face content. I guess videos that I talk to, that's what they are. They're not really vlogs. They're more of just me talking to you about something. I know not a lot of people like that sort of video. I'm hoping to do more videos where I'm on the camera so you see more of me and maybe get to know me a little bit better than you already do. I always struggle with that. I always struggle figuring out a way to sort of connect in that personal way. Because YouTube, when you're like, when the creator is on camera and talking to their followers, it's very intimate. It's like an intimate experience because I'm talking to you normally from like my room and stuff like that. So it's sort of like I'm bringing you in. So I always struggled with the balance of that. Like what should I share? What should I not share? And so that's why I kept most of my videos to my desk and to what I create. But I really kind of want to branch out and show you more of my world. I've been thinking about doing more face-to-face -face stuff, doing vlogs. I really enjoyed my day at Coney Island vlog that I did. I don't know how many years ago, one summer. I feel like I should do more of that. I don't really leave my house very much, only because most of the work I do is from home. So I've been thinking about doing more what I'm calling artist dates, just kind of taking you all along with me when I go somewhere. But I have to be more mindful. Like I'm trying to be more mindful to do that and share those little moments because I don't really get to go out like that. Very often, I live in New York City and it's very expensive. And honestly, I think you guys would be very interested to see what I do when I actually leave. But yeah, so I'm thinking of doing some of those sort of videos. So I don't know if you'll be interested in that, but be on the lookout for that. And I feel like I always say that. I always say, oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, especially vlogs. I'm, I'm going to do vlogs. And I never do vlogs. I do like one or two or whatever. But I thought really long and hard before. It's just like a passing thought all those other years when I said I was going to do it and I didn't. But I've been thinking really hard on doing these types of videos. And for me, they're going to be a lot more challenging than just showing you a process in my journal and scrapbook and stuff like that. So, yeah, you know, keep me accountable. I suck at keeping myself accountable. But if I have followers who are very interested in seeing all those things, you know, shoot me a message. Hey, have you done that vlog yet? Hey, did you go on an artist date? I'm serious. I really need to be kept accountable into doing these things that I say that I'm going to do. Because a lot of times I say it and then I don't do it. Don't do it. And it's tragic. It's really tragic. And I feel like a lot of freelancers are kind of like that. Especially if it's something that they want to do for themselves. It's very different when you're doing it for somebody else. But when you're doing it for yourself, it's like you kind of have to self-motivate. And self-motivate can be a struggle. Be such a struggle. Anyway, I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm gonna end it here. And I hope everything that I said was understandable in my weird way that I like to think. 
hopefully you're looking forward to all of these things, and I am too. Once the weather gets better, because it's freezing cold over here, I will definitely push myself more to go outside and literally film what I see and share that with you. So uh, I will leave this here. Hope you enjoyed my little ramble, and I'll see you all next time, friends. Bye.